did you end up seeing Maxine? Did you see it the day it came out or I saw it Thursday night, 7 30. I saw that 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 only show went on Thursday night. Mm-hmm. And um I was so okay. So I, I, I I'm the horror, I'm the horror guy. So I love horror, I love the idea. I the the, the previews got me interested. The first two films that um Ty West did, I thought was really good. I liked X better than I liked Pearl. Um but both both was great. Like I, I both I enjoyed both of those. So going into the third installment, um, I was ready to enjoy that aspect of it too. My main take from it is he made 1980s look great on screen. Everything about 1980s, he made sure that was there, you know, from the font, from the way the film looked, the color grading. The characters, the way they act, talk, dress, looked, walked, moved, like everything screamed 1980s. And I think that was the best part of, of the film for me, the, including the music, all of that. I can actually second everything you just said as far as like the vibe of the movie. And if we're talking about, you know, cinematography, color grading, all that stuff, that that's all definitely true. I think I ended up seeing it when I came back. Um, I think I seen it like Sunday, yeah, su- Sunday night, Sunday, something like that. And theater wasn't really that packed. It was kind of like a moderate, you know, it, it was it wasn't packed at all. That you know, you had kind of like a, a, a regular crowd, like you could you couldn't literally seats are reserved now. You could you could have literally sat in any seat and you probably would have been okay like it was that type of situation but yeah my first reaction to the movie it was it was interesting in a lot of ways like but yeah the the cinematography kind of stood out to me in the beginning especially kind of like just you know shifting between like the aspect ratios and the and the the graininess of like the four by three kind of going from four by three to 18 by nine, like super wide aspect ratio. So I, I thought that was, was very cool. And I, and, and of course they're going to do that because if it's in the eighties, they have to do something to remind the audience aside from, you know, the production design and, and every, and, and the clothing and just everything that's all happening in the film that they're in the eighties, but I don't want to give it away, but a certain, a certain thing happened in an alleyway and yeah. that shit made me uncomfortable <laughs> like I, I was like yo that really just happened right now like uh what are your what are your thoughts on like the special effects side of the game so i thought i thought he did well i mean i, I i'm when it comes to horror i like so much about horror that it's great to see new things interesting things and 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 that's the type of I mean, when you make a horror, when you make a horror film about like X, when you make something like that, you kind of set the bar for the type of creator that you are. So that particular scene about in the alleyway, I wasn't surprised. Um, but I, but it gets you going, gets you interested, gets you intrigued on where the film is going to go, that type of thing. Um, so I thought the special, I thought in those instances, special effects was great. I also like the con, the contrast of modern special effects to the 80 special effects which he showed in the film so it's like in the film when things happen when people when the characters die or you had like um one of the girls body parts was all up in the in the case in the suitcase and then when he got kicked down the steps you kind of see that that looked real like oh that looked like a, somebody's actual head but then when you show because they're doing a movie in the film a 80s movie and then when you show the the props of an '80s head, you can clearly tell that that was fake. Right, like you could clearly see that is a fake head. So I love that he was able to put emphasis on making that distinct difference, and not making it making the kills look like '80 kills. If that makes sense, if I'm making sense on that. Um, the only thing outside of I wasn't the biggest fan of the direction of how the story went, the turn and twist and stuff like that. The, but the main thing that that bothered me the most about this film, um, and I could be wrong, I'm, I'm trying to remember. So there's not many minority characters um, in the story. It's the 80s, it's LA, that makes completely sense. 
um, there's a few, there's a handful of characters that die in the film, right? Like that we actually see kind of die in the film. Um, and then there's a bunch of characters that we don't see die in the film, but we know get cut up or sliced up or whatever the case may be. But the one character that we see die and get stabbed up was like kind of like her best friend, which was the 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 black character um, in the film. And I wanted, to, and, and it kind of bothered me on why did we need to see him die so group so 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 gruesomely, but not the other characters die in a similar way. If that makes sense. Um, I I can see what you mean by that. Um. Because they did kind of linger on him a little bit longer as far as like how he like died and stuff. Um, I personally didn't think of it in, in that manner only because of the way they, you know, violated Kevin Bacon. They had him in that car and they just fucking mm. crushed him and, hit, and they pretty much juiced him. And they mm. sat there and just w- and, and watched it like what wasn't wasn't shit going on. And then let the um, dogs eat it. Yeah, that was that was that was nasty as hell. Okay. Also, yeah, another thing, the- another thing that I wanted to ask is we don't see as often. Well, I, I haven't caught on to it as often. Is so Ty West is a director edit. Interesting. Like if you see a lot of his projects, he edits them. Like he edited this film for sure. I'm pretty sure he edited the first the those the first two. I'm pretty sure he edited all three. So I think that's in- interesting to dynamic also that I-, I feel like we just don't see as often as we see like a writer director or a cinematographer director. You know what I'm saying? Like an editor director, I think is an interesting combination for whatever reason. It just interests me that he he sat down, he's like the lead editor on the project and he also directed it. Cause it seems like, it just that just makes more sense when you want to have like that kind of full control of the product that's being put out there. Like most people would think, all right, if I'm capturing the shots, right? Like I'm the cinematographer capturing the shots and I'm directing the shots, that's great. But when it comes to like the storytelling, you know, aspect of things, you know, that editor really can make or break the story in a sense, you know, even if it's even from the simple as is the editor good or not whatever the case may be but just how you cut those those scenes together um you know especially in horror films with jump scares timing you know different things like that um i think that's just interesting to see that he's a director editor well in this case he wrote he writes it too so he's like that director writer editor i think that's just an interesting combo and and that was one of the main questions that i wanted to ask your thoughts on that as being an editor yourself you know, and also have want to direct and shit. How do you feel about seeing that type of thing, that combo of writer, of I mean, of editor, director, and have do you know any? Is anybody notable of doing that outside of this? Has it came to mind prior? Well, I mean, the concept isn't unfamiliar, especially at the level that we're at, because you know, being a filmmaker, like as as a student, you're obviously going to be editing your own stuff most of the time as far as like you know your first couple of short films that you do you're definitely going to be you know wearing multiple hats you're going to be doing this you're going to be doing that you're going to be writing directing editing that's kind of like an all-in-one package that you're committed to doing in the beginning seeing it done at the highest level is an interesting dynamic and 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 I, and I don't think it's impossible. And I think, you know, when it comes to you editing your own project, there probably, it, there, there's something special about the project that you, that you really want to have your hands on. So as a director, you're there in the entire process. You're there in the beginning, middle, end. But to want to be there in the post-production process, in the editing lab, cutting it together because now you're you know you're re-watching all the stuff that you saw on set and you're literally responsible for the pacing of the movie i think it's i, I think it's a cool thing and, and and just seeing it 
happen at this level just kind of gives people the validity that okay this is not impossible because you know you 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 always see the writer director you always see you know the director or who 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 was the director cinematographer i think that was zach snyder i think he did that for a few of his projects he was mm-hmm. like the the yeah the director and the cinematographer so so it it happens it's it's definitely rare it's definitely recommended obviously that you just take on one job so you can truly get into your bag as far as like your your main responsibility but it's not too often that i hear of a a director that that also is like fully editing the project yeah that's what i was saying i thought it was interesting i was sort of interested because i just got into this world of like you know to second what you're saying you know a lot of us we we come up that way but once once people you see once people make it, they kind of focus on one thing. I'm just going to be the writer. I'm just going to be the director. I'm going to write and direct. But you read, obviously, you know, you sit in the editing room with your editor and kind of make sure everything is going smooth. But there's definitely a hands-off aspect um, to the project once it goes to somebody else's hand, like the editor, right? So, yeah, it's your vision, but that editor is still kind of piece it together. So it's a different dynamic when you're the one heading that editing team and sitting there as the editor and piecing everything together, including just the ability to be able to do some of those special effect things that they're, that they was able to do stuff like that to make that work. I think it's interesting. And he does it all. Like he's done just about everything that, that, um, so he's done the last three films, right? X Pearl Maxine. Mm -hmm. He's also, you know, um, and then he directed some some horror films that I also was a fan of, like VHS, you know, stuff like that. So some aspects to it. Uh, so it's interesting. I just thought it was interesting. I wanted to get a perspective for somebody who actually, you know, edits. Like, yeah, we all kind of like for me, I, you know, we all start off editing. But my, my thesis film, I didn't want to edit. I allow somebody else to edit. Right. So there's a hands on aspect to it. But like after you give your notes and you say, hey, this is what I want. This is what I need. This is what I'm thinking. This there could be a disconnection. Like you're hoping that you're on the same page. So that when they, that person goes out on their own to edit and they send it back to you, it's exactly what you envision in your head. It's different when you sit down and can create exactly what you envision in your head. That type of control or, or the sense of at that level anyway, where you're the, the director, the writer the producer and the editor, you just don't see, you know, as all, it's a lot, it's a lot to do one. It's like, it's a lot of work to do one, but you just, it's just interesting to kind of see that unfold. To be honest. And at that level, when, when you have like an editor, I wouldn't be surprised if there were, there was some kind of like arrangement. Like, I don't, I don't know if, I don't know if editors that are like, you know, in the union, I don't know if they edit in their own machines at home or they go to a production company's like facility and office and they have an editing suite there Mm -hmm. that they edit and say if it's like in L.A. And let's just say like the director also either lives in L.A. or he chooses to stay in L.A. for a month or two while the film is being edited. And he's kind of like going to the editing lab with the editor and allowing him to like do his thing because in in this in this case the editor is the expert on whatever software he's using avid vinci whatever whatever software it is he's the expert on that and the director is pretty much there kind of giving him like just key directions on how to cut it together and stuff so but there there still could you know there still could be a disconnect if if the director really isn't there to like oversee it from start to finish because obviously there's a there's there's a there's like calibers when it comes to the directors you know there's elite up there they got all of the all of the control like like um oh dude that does that did terminator what's that motherfucker's name what Ar- Arnold? James Cameron. Arnold? oh james, james cameron, cameron. Like we see the control that James Cameron has, we see the control that Zack Snyder has on on those projects. I do, so do all directors have some sort of control that's up in that realm? You know what I'm saying? 
I, I think, you know, I think I honestly think it varies from film to film. And and the reason why I say that is because on certain projects, the relationship amongst the pro- production unit with the other pieces that are at play might be a little different. So on one project, the director may have more control over what happens and what goes because the director is also the producer on the project. He's also, you know, very well connected with the other, the other people on set. He might, he might be close friends with the writer and close friends with, with this person and close friends with the executive producer. So they kind of already have an established relationship. So they're able to, 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 to willingly trust him and let him do whatever he wants. In other cases, you might have, you, you, you may have, you know, an executive producer that, you know, I I don't like it, it. And we don't even have to, you know, say that they're, you know, they're in a good relationship with the director they may be the type to step in and be like, all right, we can't make this happen. This has to be done a different way. And in that regard, he has more power than a director because the director could, you know, he could do this all day, but at the end of the day, the executive producer, you know, the person who's providing the most, you know, you know, the most financing for the project may have a bigger say at the end of the day as far as the money goes. And that could also be a thing where he might have a relationship with the writer and um, he might actually give a shit and be like, listen, this has to happen this way because I want to make sure that that this story stays true to what the writer wants or the writer might be there on set. Um, now, I, the only reason why I'm using this as an example is because it it, it kind of gives you a visual reference of what I'm talking about. If you saw it, chapter two, and you saw um dude who was the writer on that little film that they were shooting, how he was on set, he was literally on set, kind of right. you know writing scenes as they're like filming a movie type of stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens in real life. Like the they would invite the writer out to the set and he has his own little trailer and he's kind of there being observant of everything that's happening. I wouldn't be surprised if he kind of, you know, if the writer kind of walks up to the director or taps him on the shoulder and is like, Hey, uh, this is what I meant when I said this. Uh, I think we like, like, and, and again, we're not going to know until we get there of that battle, that conversation that happens of like, who, who wins, like who, who wins, who has more creative control, et cetera, et cetera. That's like, you know, I can't really give a definite answer on that, but how, how, how much control does the director really have? You know, cause they, they, they sport the director as it's like this huge creative genius that kind of controls the creativity. So everything that we see on the screen comes from the idea of that creativity of the director, mm-hmm. but you know, clearly it's not always, you know, that cut cut and dry, you know, like there's other, like you mentioned, other things that's more important, like whoever's paying for it gets the last say type of thing. It also makes it more interesting to see somebody like Ty, like, you know, like Ty West, who is the writer, director, and now the editor, right? So like he's getting the, is he getting the absolute say, like in a sense of like, he's direct, he wrote it, brought it to the production company, said, hey, this is what, what I want to do. Let's green light it. He directed it and then brought it to the like, hey, this is what I want to do. Green light it. Now he's sitting down and cutting it up. And this is the type of narrative. This is the type of story. This is what I'm trying to push. And then brought it to the director and cut it up. So that's also interesting. Like, does is he now moving into that space where he's getting a lot of control when it comes to the projects that he's a part of, you know? But um, yeah, I don't know what I would give Maxine. Um, I would give it. I, I'll, I'll give it a good watch. Honestly, I would give it a good watch because it, 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 it wasn't. It wasn't a. It wasn't a bad movie. Like I thought it was. It wasn't bad. Good. I agree. I agree. Um, I agree. It wasn't bad. I agree with that. I'll give it a good watch. Also, 
And people are gonna go see it if they want. You know, I think I yeah. think I think it it matches in and it plays well with the uh, the first two films. It ties into it. And interesting piece. I would give it a good watch just for how great the film was edited, how great it looked, uh, appealing in that aspect. It did move a little bit slower than I would have expected for a horror film thriller in a sense. Um, but yeah, I still would give it a good watch. <laughs>